A very good morning to Dr. Nizar. Today our group, Group 14, will be presenting about postmodernism by Richard Ashley. Muhammad Afifisan will go first and he will be presenting about postmodernism. Next is Siti Amira. She will be presenting about general characteristics of postmodernism. And next is I, myself, Ino Gedman, will be talking about Richard Ashley. And next is Norati Kaisma. And she will be talking about ethics and international political policy and next is Farid Hakimi and he will be talking about criticism towards postmodernism and lastly Sarah Shahida she will be talking about what do postmodernists believe well I will explain what postmodernism is postmodernism is a broad movement that developed in the mid to late 20th century across philosophy the term has been more generally applied to describe a historical era site to follow after moderni modernity and the tendency of this era. Besides, most of postmodernism is an intellectual notion and modern value in the history of Western philosophy during the 7th century to the 19th century. Postmodernism is generally defined by an attitude of skepticism, irony, or rejection toward what it describes as the grand narrative and ideologies associated with moder modernism, often criticizing enlightenment, rationality, and focusing on the role of ideology in maintaining political or economic power that's all thank you thank you next i'm going to explain about general characteristic of postmodernism one of the characteristic is rejection of individual identity According to postmodernism, people exist as members of a group and not as individuals. Uh, this is a major distinction between postmodernism and modernism. In postmodernism, postmodern the individual has no place. Next is the rejection of humanism. The modernistic concept of human creativ creativity autonomy of the individual and the priority of humans over all as else are rejected as wrong values the problem is that creativity autonomy and human priority are values that exclude and oppress other humans postmodernists argue that groups not individuals must empower themselves and assert their own values last but not least is the social constructivism meaning morality and truth do not exist objectively this is at the heart of the postmodernist worldview truth with its attendant concept of meaning and morality are constructed by society everything centers around the story that the community has created to establish its validity and the community is in which a person plays himself creates their own visions of these things thus what is truth for one group is not necessarily truth for another that's all for me i will pass this uh, presentation to other members i will be talking about richard ashley richard Ashley is a postmodernist scholar of international relations. He is an associate professor at the Arizona State University School of Politics and Global Studies. Ashley studied at the University of California, Santa Barbara, and at Massachusetts Institute of Technology, also known as MIT, and he was research assistant to Hayward Elke. And initially, Ashley's research was on the balance of power in international relations particularly in his books, The Political Economy of War and Peace, 1980. He soon began to shift his approach to metatheoretical questions and critical theory. By the mid-1980s, 
actually had adopted a postmodernist and subversive approach to international relations theory, exemplified by his influences, which is Jacques Derrida, Michel Foucault, and Gayatri Chakravorty Spivak. Ashley was one of the first to challenge the position of mainstream realism and liberalism. In his book, The Poverty of Neurism, 1984, he coined the term neorealism to describe the work of Kenneth Waltz. There are two points about the ethics and political policy postmodernism. The first one is postmodernism universal ethics is an oxymoron. There is no consensus on the universality of ethical codes, considering the multiplicity of organizations and cultures, not to mention management styles, and presenting a universal rationality of ethics is either on either an illusion or a mass attempt to use force to make people act as if they were one. But the lack of confidence in fundamental ethics does not end. It asserts a postmodern ethic of self-examination and self-sacrifice while leaving open the possibility that as that might be right in one sense or community are wrong in another, and that one should challenge the uni- universalization of ethics without abandoning the search for moral choice and the need to synchronize one's ethical action with others. The second one is a non-universalized postmodernism ethics. The postmodern term acknowledge that world politics is infused with ethics. Ethics and international relations work begin by gaining a critical understanding of the limits of ethical theory, its, depa- its dependency on modernist fundamental assumptions. Traditionally, ethical thinking is focused on Ashley and Walker writing. Criticism towards postmodernism According to Bishop 1996, page 58, the postmodernist genre of ethnography has been criticized for fostering a self-indulgent subjectivity and for exaggerating the esoteric and unique aspects of a culture at the expense of more prosaic but significant questions. Secondly, Greenfield 2005 believes that postmodernism's complete lack of objectivity and its tendency to push political agendas make it virtually useless in any scientific investigation. Moreover, McKinley 2000 believes that postmodernism is more of a religion than a science. He argues that the origin of postmodernism is the Western emphasis on individualism, which makes postmodernists reluctant to acknowledge the existence of distinct multi-individual cultures. Linguist Noam Chomsky has argued that postmodernism is meaningless because it adds nothing to analytical or empirical knowledge. He also interpreted postmodern society to be synonymous with moral relativism and contributing to divine behavior. Next is what do postmodernists believe? The first one is the truth doesn't exist. There is no scientific or historical truth. Uh, Second one is science and technology are not instruments or vehicle for human advancement. Unless there are suspect instruments of established power. The third one is reason and logic are not universally relevant. Next is there is no human nature. They believe that human behavior and psychology are socially determined. The second last is language does not relate to fact outside itself. They said that human language is inherently messy. It depends on arbitrary, flexible, imprecise, and ever-changing relationships between signifier, such as signs and words. Last but not least, there is no general theory of natural science. The most belief of postmodernists is the truth doesn't exist. As a direct continuation of the former aspect, people are becoming less and less comfortable with the idea of one absolute truth. 
thought it has been scientifically proved that there is no such thing as truth. People seek for something to be true as it gives them a sense of feeling secure and feeling that justice exists and that our world is established by firm foundation. But in our modern life, even before the era of fake news, people have witnessed numerous times that the truth is become rare and rare to find as technological advancement global information exchange and the deterioration of authority of the world's leadership this making the average person more potent to understand how fragile our world is as they are exposed to the failure of modern regimes and structures to provide answers and well-being i think that is all from our group Thank you.